Hi EHS, I miss you all very, very much and I'm so much looking forward to when we're all together again soon. In the meantime, I know we're all home with a lot of time um, to fill. And so I wanted to share with you one of my favorite things to do when I'm home with my family and that is playing cards. Um, so today what I want to teach you is actually one of my favorite card games to play with my family and that's called Spit. It's a two player game so all it takes is you and one other person at home to be able to play and it involves speed, it can get a little bit competitive but it's really fun. Um, so, here's how you play. Okay, so let's start with the setup of the game. The very first thing you have to do is you take the whole deck and you deal it out so that each person gets half of the deck. Bonus question, if there are 52 cards, how many will each person get? The next step, once the cards have been dealt so that each person has half, is for each player to set up their cards in the following way. It starts with one card face up. Next to the face up card, you have to put four cards face down. Each player is gonna have five piles in front of them. After you do this step, you're gonna put a face up card next to the card that's already face up and then put more face down cards on the other piles. The same pattern continues. So I'm going to put another card face up, then a face down, a face down, a face up, a face down, and finally a face up. Okay, so once both players have set up their five piles in front of them, the table should look something like this. And it's also important to recognize that each of you should have some cards that are left over, that are not part of the five piles. Those cards can be held in your hand. Now that we've gone over the setup, let's talk about how to actually play the game. The goal of this game, what you're trying to do is to get rid of all of the cards in your piles before your opponent does. So it's, it's essentially a race. You're racing against your opponent to clear away all of the piles in front of you. In order to start playing, each player takes the top card off of their extra cards and puts it face up in the middle. Okay, so now that the two middle cards are set up, the race automatically can begin. The way it works is that I can take my cards and stack them on either pile that I want to, as long as the card I'm picking is either one higher or one lower than one of the cards in the middle. For example, this three, I can put onto the four because it's just one lower than four. I couldn't put it onto the nine because it's not in a row with nine. Um, so I've gotten rid of my three now. My opponent, he can take a nine, a 10 and put it on the nine because it's one higher. Once he's done that, he can flip over the card underneath. On my side, there was no card underneath for me to flip over. But instead of my normal five piles, now I'm only left with four. So I can move this card over to recreate five piles. And I'm looking to see if there's anything else I can stack. I see that I can put the two on the three. Again, I only have four, so I'm going to make my five piles. And I don't see anything else I can do. None of my cards go on this board. However, my opponent can make some moves. His nine can go on the 10. His ace can go on the two because an ace, remember, acts like either a one or as the card above king. Now there are lots of different moves that can be made. 
Remember though, it is a race as you're playing. So for example, you can see here, both me and my opponent have a king and both of our kings can go on top of the ace. So whoever gets it there first, will get to use that ace and continue on. Here's an example of us playing through a full round of spit. As you can see, we're racing to put our cards from our piles into the middle as quickly as we can. You'll also notice that since we're holding our extra cards in one hand, we're only able to use our free hand to put the cards into the middle, which makes this game a little more challenging. Eventually what's going to happen is that neither one of us will be able to make any moves because our cards won't line up with the cards in the middle. When this happens, we each take a new card from the top of our extra card deck and flip it over to the middle and continue playing. Again, our goal is to get rid of all of the cards in front of us. And when that happens, this round is over. The way the round ends is that the player who has gotten rid of their cards first gets to make a choice between the two piles. They will pick up the pile that they think is smaller and those cards will go into their deck. So you can see I won that round. I'm going to pick the pile I think is smaller and now it's part of my deck. Okay, so once you've finished a round, you start an over again with a new round using the same setup as before, making the five piles. Let's imagine that we've gone through several rounds already and I've been doing quite well. So that means each time I've gotten to pick the smaller pile, eventually I'm gonna end up with a very small number of cards in my hand. And what happens is that when I go to do my setup, I'm gonna run into a problem because I won't have enough cards to do the full five piles. If this happens, what I'll need to do is flip over the top card in each pile so that I have my five cards, but I won't have anything to flip over and put into the middle. So what will happen is my opponent will take one of his cards and put it into the middle to start the round and we will only be able to play on this one pile. Okay, so let's imagine now this is the end of the round. We've been racing to stack our cards on the middle pile and I have one last card left, the two which I can put on top of the three, and I've cleared away all of the cards from my piles. Normally now is when I would choose between two piles to pick the smaller one. However, there's only one pile here and there's really like an empty space where the other pile would have been. I'm gonna choose the empty space, meaning that I don't have any cards to pick up. There are no cards left on my side, none in my piles. And that is how I've officially won this game of spit. Okay, so now that you've seen a full example of how to play the game spit, just wanted to leave you with some final reminders about how this game is played. You're racing to get rid of all your cards as quickly as you can, but remember you should only be using one hand. You should only be putting one card at a time uh, into the middle. And cards can only be put on a pile if they are one higher or one lower than the card shown. For example, if the card on the top of the pile was a king, you can put either a queen, because that's one lower, or an ace, that would be one higher. Let's say you had an ace on the top, you can put either a two, that would be the card higher, or a king, that would be the card lower. Okay, for five, you could put a six or a four. One thing I do wanna mention, because this comes up with people a lot of times when they're first playing this game, is people ask if they can put a five on top of the five, and the answer is no. You cannot put the same card on top of each other. It's only a six or a four. One other question that comes up a lot is people are wondering about the suit or the color of the card, especially if you're familiar with games like Solitaire where you have to stack cards and you have to alternate 
uh, the color of the cards. In this game, it does not matter what the suit or the color of the card is. You could put a red four, you can put a four of spades, you can put a six of diamonds. The color and suit does not matter. Okay, so thank you so much for watching my instructional video on how to play one of my all-time favorite card games, Spit. I hope you enjoyed learning this game and hopefully now you feel ready to try it on your own. Good luck!